Hi everyone and welcome back to Rachel's Enchanting Cakes. Now today we're going to do this 40th beauty. We have some beautiful gold effects on the drips, on the third tier, on the base tier. A lovely rosette ruffle effect that's been made extremely easy. I'm going to show you everything step by step. Gold butterflies. Sweet stamp is featured on the edible cake topper that you can see on the top. Everything you need to know in a simple step-by-step -step format. For the purpose of this tutorial, I am using a 10-inch round, 6-inch deep cake dummy. But in your case, this would be cake. Here I have one kilogram of the sugar paste, a large rolling pin, spacers, sharp knife, some icing sugar and the fantastic rosette ruffle mold by marvelous molds i start by covering my cake to make with some cooled down boiled water using one packet of the sugar paste which is exactly one kilogram i now roll this out and try to keep it a circular shape I roll it relatively thin because we need it to cover the 10 inch round, 6 inch deep cake dummy. Remember in your case, it's going to be a cake. Use your rolling pin to lift up the fondant, place it over the cake and negotiate the pleats. Cut off any excess with a sharp knife and smooth out the sides with the cake smoother. And this is what you're aiming to achieve. Again, don't worry about any imperfections as we are now going to use that beautiful rosette ruffle mould and cover all of the sides. You will find a link to this rosette ruffle mould in the description below this video. They are so easy to use. Now start with a small amount of Trex vegetable fat. Simply place this directly into your mould and then add a small sprinkling of icing sugar. Taking the sugar paste that you have just rolled out into a rectangular shape, simply add this to the mould. Use your fingers to push in the sugar paste and pick up as much of the detail as possible. I am not using modelling paste, this is just a high quality fondant. I then use my rolling pin both over the top and the back again to pick up that detail and place this in the freezer for five minutes just to help the fondant go lovely and hard and it is very easy to remove from the mould. I'm just going to show you how easy it is now to remove from the actual mould and then to apply it to the cake I'm going to be using a steamer. These moulds are designed to fit even sized cakes. So a 10 inch, 8 inch, 6 inch, 4 inch, etc. Where the pattern starts to where it finishes, it will meet perfectly. If you do not own a steamer, you can use edible glue. I'm now going to speed this footage up for you so that you can see me add one panel at a time to the cake. For the final piece, this is where you will see it meet from start to finish. For this sized cake, you will need five pieces in total for the base. And then I'm going to show you how to add them to the top section as well. You will have also noticed during this tutorial, I have been using a Dresden tool. This is just to make the pattern look like it meets perfectly. So I have adjusted those ruffles slightly. I'm now going to speed this process up so that I can show you how to achieve that beautiful gold effect. Here I have Faye Carl's Regency Gold 100% Edible Luster Dust. And I'm going to turn this into a paint by simply mixing it with a small amount of clear alcohol. I do a 50 to 50 ratio. It's very, very easy to achieve. And I will leave the product description just below this video. 
I'm simply adding this to my little tub that I have here. Don't worry if you don't have one of these. Just use something that's similar. I'm going to place the alcohol in there and then give it a good shake. If you don't own an airbrushing kit, this can be hand painted, however, it will take you an awful lot longer. I simply airbrush all of the cake, doing a little bit at a time, and then I keep going over the first colour once it has set and adding another layer. I will speed this up and just wait until you see the beautiful striking effect it leaves behind. It really does look like real gold. For the second tier, I'm using this eight inch round, eight inch deep, cut out circled cake dummy. I'm going to be using a paneling technique with the Renshaw's Cassis ready to roll fondant. I have exactly one kilogram. I also need a large rolling pin, five millimeter spacers, a sharp knife and some icing sugar. Start by rolling out a small amount of the cassis fondant. You do not need your spaces for this. We will simply be placing this directly on top of the cake dummy. Now brush over the top of the dummy with some cooled down boiled water before adding your fondant and cutting off any excess. Now simply cover the outer edges of the cake dummy with some cooled down boiled water. Simply roll the rest of your fondant into a large sausage shape. We are going to be rolling this into a rectangle shape that needs to be on average 24 inches long and 8 inches deep. Use the spacers to help keep the shape perfect and also five millimeters thick. Taking the cake dummy, simply wrap it up in the fondant gently. Trim off the excess fondant so where the circles are and above where the fondant meets and then we will be placing this upright before we trim off any more excess on the top of the cake dummy. When trimming the layer of fondant just off the top, just be very delicate so you do not damage the fondant that is already there. I'm then just going to steam this to get rid of any excess icing sugar. If you don't have a steamer, simply brush off any excess icing sugar first and then using a large wet brush with cooled down boiled water, brush it over the cake. These are a great investment though, as you can see, it gets rid of the icing sugar very easily. The next step is to fill in the centre. In order to fill the centre, all I have done is rolled out a thin piece of my Cassis fondant, placed it directly on the rolling pin. Again, I've used some cooled down boiled water and I'm going to cover the bottom half first flip this upside down and then simply repeat that process. It's a little bit fiddly, just cut away the excess fondant and be very careful to not damage what is already there. And this is what it will look like once you have added all of that beautiful Renshaw's Cassis fondant. Don't worry if you have any imperfections on there at all, as we have quite a few elements to add with that beautiful gold drip. Simply leave this to one side to allow your cake dummy and the fondant to set. Make up a batch of royal icing. The recipe and method for this is in the description below this video. Place it into a piping bag and cut off the tip. In order to pipe beautiful drips along the sides of your cake, hold the piping bag vertically and when you get to the section where you want the drip to be, simply squeeze the piping bag very gently and gravitate will do the rest of the work for you. Take your time covering the sides of this cake and then leave the royal icing for 24 hours to allow it to set. 
I will speed this process up for you so that you can see it all take shape. Using some of the edible lustre paint that we made earlier for the base tier, you now simply want to paint each of the drips one by one. And this is the beautiful effect that you are aiming to achieve. For the final finishing touches, I am using the Madame Butterfly Cake Place Mat. I have a spreader and the pearlized gold cake lace it's already made up. Using only the section of the mat where the butterflies are, I simply spread over the gold cake lace, leave this to one side overnight, and this can be our final finishing touch for the second tier. Simply peel this away from the mat, then using some very fine scissors, cut away each individual butterfly. Using a small amount of edible glue, simply add these beautiful butterflies anywhere you want to the second tier of this cake. Here I have a six inch round, six inch deep cake dummy. In your case, again, it would be cake. Another packet of the sugar paste, a sharp knife, some cake smoothers and some icing sugar. Here I have rolled out 500 grams of the sugar paste and I've already covered the cake dummy with some cooled down boiled water. Simply drape this over the top of your cake in this instance, negotiate the pleats, cut off any excess fondant and simply smooth it out with your cake smoothers. Once your fondant has set, you now want to airbrush this with that beautiful Regency Gold Luster Dust. Again, if you don't have a, an airbrush, this can be hand painted. Just how striking does that look? You now just want to leave this to set before we can add the final element to the third tier. For the final tier of this cake, I have a four inch round four inch deep cake dummy. 500 gram of the Renshaw Cassis, some icing sugar, my smoothers, a sharp knife, a large rolling pin, and again, this time the five millimeter spacers. If this was a real cake, I'll be using the panelling technique that we used for the second tier. So you want to start by rolling out some of your Renshaw Cassis fondant, Place it directly on top of your four inch cake and simply cut off any excess. Simply roll out your fondant into a rectangular shape. You want it roughly six inches deep and just over 12 inches long. Now in your case, you're going to be using a real cake and this does work. The same technique that I'm going to be doing with this dummy, you can actually do it to a cake. I have done this method in the candlelit cake tutorial, which you will find in the amazing cake section, where you can see me do this to a very tall four inch round cake. Once I have rolled this out, I'm going to physically pick up the cake dummy. In your case, it would be a refrigerated crumb coated cake where all the fillings are lovely and hard and set. Place it directly onto the fondant and simply roll over it. Simply trim off any excess fondant and then just like we did with the second tier, steam the cake or if you don't have a steamer, use some cool down boiled water and get rid of any excess icing sugar. Using the same technique that we did for the second tier, I have just made another batch of royal icing and I'm simply going around the edges of the cake and creating that beautiful drip effect. Remember to leave it for 24 hours before we paint it that lovely Regency gold. With a fine brush, simply paint each drip with some of the leftover gold luster paint that you have made. In order to create the cake topper, I am using the Love Elements Sweet Stamp Set. I have a heart cutter 
and again some Renshaw's Cassis, which I'm going to turn into modelling paste. Ace. Simply add one level teaspoon of Tylo powder to every 250 gram of fondant. This will turn it into modelling paste. Just knead it into the fondant and there we have it, we can make the topper. Start by rolling out your fondant so it's a minimum of five millimetres thick. Taking an element out of the Love Element set, so I've chosen to use Cupid, I simply push this into the fondant. I then take the heart cutter and cut out a beautiful heart shape. You then want to add a cocktail stick to the base of the heart. This will support it into the cake when everything has set. Leave it to dry and then it will be airbrushed or in your case, if you don't have an airbrushing kit painted with that beautiful Regency gold. Leaving Cupid in there, I now simply airbrush this, that lovely Regency gold. It just means when I remove Cupid later on, when it sets slightly, where Cupid actually is, it will be an embossed effect into the actual topper, but it will remain that beautiful Cassis colour. Once this is set, I then simply flip it over and airbrush the other side. Once this is set, simply remove Cupid using some tweezers and there you have it. A 100% edible homemade cake topper. Now we get to stack the cake. So here I have a 14 inch round decorated cake drum. Now I'm covering this with water because obviously mine's a cake drum. If this was a real cake, I would have left it in the fridge. It would have also been placed on a cake board. By leaving it in the fridge, yes, it will sweat once it starts to reach room temperature, but you prevent damaging any of the work you've done to the cake because all of the fondant and all of the fillings will be really hard. I am now going to lift this up as though I would a real cake. Yes, yours will be an awful lot heavier. It is doable. And remember, yours wants to be on a cake board. You would also place it on the board with a little bit of buttercream rather than water. And you'll also notice I've marked a score line so I know exactly where to place the cake. Now, the second tier, no matter what, will not be cake, but we still need to get it in the right place and it still needs to be doweled. So here I am just placing another score line using one of my loose base cake tins that's exactly eight inch round. You would then need to dowel this section because you've got to remember, even though the polystyrene isn't heavy, what goes on top of the polystyrene is going to be real cake for the third and the fourth layer. Once you have doubled the centre, you would then apply buttercream. In my case, because this is all a cake domain, it's polystyrene, I'm just adding a small amount of water. This tier you can pick up using the sides. It's very, very light and very easy to add. Now simply repeat this process for the last two tiers. So you want to mark a score line. This part does not need to be doweled, but in your case, you would be using buttercream, not water. And then treating it like a real cake, again, I would have left mine in the fridge. It will be on a cake card just to make it easier to pick up. And then I would lift it from underneath. And for the final finishing touch, simply place in the 100% edible cake topper. And there we have it, our completed, stunning, four-tiered, golden drip cake. Happy baking, guys. Thank you all so much for your continued support. It means the world. And I will be back soon with more new, completely free content.